are also witnessing here is a success of another kind. A success at rebranding an idea that had been cultivated for many years before Burns' film. Fast forward to present day, and you'll find no shortage of gurus promoting these same rehashed ideas. The moment you start feeling abundant and worthy, you are generating wealth. Three law of attraction truths that I wish I knew earlier. Whatever you can see in your mind, you can hold in your hand, whether you want to be a millionaire, spiritual. whether you Seven want steps to speed up the law of attraction using your spiritual powers. Here we establish the first pattern of this industry targeting a vulnerable audience. Those who are struggling financially, having relationship problems, or suffering from a disease are particularly favorable. Or perhaps you're just searching for answers. This idea, this law of attraction, seems to serve up answers in such a simple yet idealistic way. And the truth is you can actually get whatever you want in life. Whatever you can see in your mind, you can hold in your hand. Whether you want to be a millionaire, whether you want to give you three ways to manifest money within 24 hours. How would you like to get your ex back? The law of attraction may be the power you need. When you're vulnerable or desperate, Critical thinking is dull, and feeling and emotion cloud your decision-making abilities. So when you're presented this secret, a secret that promises to change your life with so little effort, who could possibly fault you for wanting to believe? The bait has been set, but you have to understand. The law of attraction is only one branch of a bigger belief system. Esther's book, The Law of Attraction, one such problematic teaching centers around the idea that a victim of a robbery is a co-creator of the violence inflicted upon them. Jerry states, I can understand robbers being attracted to those they're robbing, but it's difficult to see innocent victims attracting the robbery, or the person being discriminated against attracting the prejudice. Hicks responds, they are just the same. The assaulted and the assaulter are co-creators of the event. If you think Hicks's response here is a one-off, you'd be mistaken. She emphasizes this point numerous times. Take a moment to truly consider the level of victim blaming and lack of accountability that such a position would lead to. Or instead of a robbery, imagine a child born into poverty who starves to death before the age of five. According to Hicks's teachings, these children were co-creators of their fate. And this isn't a belief shared just by Hicks alone. This is a fundamental premise in all of New Thought. By this logic, we can say that the perpetrators of countless crimes shouldn't be held accountable. After all, they are just the product of their victims' vibrational frequency. 